Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor, who has to start off by apologizing to the artist Greta Heinlein. Uh, Heinlein? Heinlein? I don't even know how to pronounce her name. That's my first apology. My second apology is for the terrible thumbnail. Nirvana meets Nico? Uh, listen, this is why, okay? Almost every Thursday, well, when things are going well, every Thursday, I try to feature an artist that is lesser known, you know, like, like an artist who I haven't already reviewed or who I didn't know before just scrolling through title looking at different, uh, different new releases, okay? My goal with this, you know, like the, the Thunderground Thursday, that's what I call it. it. It never makes me, you know, money. It never gets me viewers. <laughs> I just do it because part of this channel is supporting artists. And, and this is the, the, the terrible paradox is that if you really want to get people in and you want to talk about like new music they haven't heard of, you have to make the video shorter than usual and you have to have something punchy. And I'm going to tell you, I am going to sing at the end of this video, like, like with a guitar, I am going to sing. Professor Sky, I'm going to sing and play guitar. Stick, stick around, listen to all my talks about Gretel here. But that's why I had to title it that way because you have to get people in somehow. People are scared of the new. Now, now the, the last sort of Thunderground Thursday video I did, uh, uh, the artist asked me to take the video down, so who knows? Maybe I should have apologized on that video as well, but, but I can't help it. I, I want to share this new music. Uh, I was once a, a musician who felt like nobody ever listened to me, and it's very painful, even if you're successful. And Gretel Heinlein is a successful musician in, in all ways, you know, made a great album, is able to perform and all that. Even if you're successful, there's just not enough people paying enough attention to new music. There just isn't. So if you are here because you saw, hmm, Nirvana meets Nico, I'm intrigued. Good. Now, now allow me to explain that, all right? The Nico part. Well, first of all, apparently she's British. Gretel Heinlein is, is British. But with a name like Gretel, what happened to Hansel and Gretel? You know, I, I don't know. I guess that's why she chose that name. And then Heinlein or Heinlein is her last name, but she like added umlauts, which by the way, in the 80s, there used to be all sorts of added umlauts in heavy metal music. I'm happy to see it. But when I listened to this album for the first time, I just assumed that she was German. So that made me think of Nico. But the main thing that made me think of Nico is that she sings in a very low register. Women singing in low registers is rarely um, applauded by the masses, okay? It's not in general. There's sort of a weird sexist paradox where, you know, uh, if, if men sing in falsetto, it's seen as being great, but if women sing in a low register, it's, uh, it's generally not suitable for pop. I mean, obviously there's tons of, tons, tons of exceptions. You know, Lady Gaga sings very low and is very popular. But in general, this is to our detriment because there are so many great vocalists who can sing low. And the first one I thought of was Nico, which by the way, if you've never read this, uh, I haven't read the entire thing. My daughter's read it. Um, I read the review of it and I've read some of it. It's very good. It's the biography of Nico, You Are Beautiful and Alone. I'll put that up there. Um, you know, Nico, as you can tell, my Velvet Underground and Nico albums behind me, is one of my favorite singers. And part of it is that ability that she has to use that low voice. Women singing in a low voice has a different impact, has a different emotional impact. So when you mix that with a sort of grunge sensibility, mind you, as far as I can tell, I think I read somewhere that Gretel Heinlein is 20 years old, so... Uh, <laughs> she was born, whatever, 15 years after Cobain killed himself, so it's not like, you know, this is any kind of rehash, whatever, it's just, um, but, but it's, it's an interesting combination, and I'll get more into details about why it's like Nirvana. Really, it's not that much like Nirvana all the way through, but there is a lot of sort of grunge sensibility. In a lot of ways, this is a great counterpoint, um, or, uh, accompaniment to the 100 Gex album that came out earlier this week, because... It's also moving through different sort of uh, styles of the 90s. All the way throughout the songwriting here is great. Lots of different parts, a lot of unexpected moments. It's, it's a, a thing where often when, when uh, songwriters are relatively new, and if she really is 20 years old, then she has to be relatively new, right? <laughs> That's just only Mozart was an old hand at writing at 20. Um, you don't, like, like you, there could be good songwriting, but you everything you sort of expect. There's tons of unexpected moments in this. Interesting vocal decisions, interesting uh, production decisions, but really at the center of this whole thing is this voice. She just has this amazing, I'm not gonna say smoky, but I did watch a video where she was smoking and that upset me. <laughs> 
I, I can't, I'm a, I'm a 45 year old dad, okay? I'm a music reviewer. <laughs> And I understand the paradox of giving my daughter a Nico biography and then being upset that a, a female singer is smoking. But I am always thinking of artists who can inspire my teenage daughter, you know, and you know, she makes music and, and there aren't that many, um, there are actually a lot of great models for her to follow, but they're a little bit hidden. They're not really in the mainstream. So this is a great example. You know, we listened to this album together and even though my daughter was having a terrible day, she really liked this album. She really liked listening to it. And I think part of a drew to it is this ability to sing in this lower register and be able to, to communicate so well. It's funny because I've been trying to understand TikTok better. It's a weird place, man. That's, it's weird. It's weird. That's my professional opinion of TikTok. It's weird. It's weird, but I was also spending more time on Instagram and I, I looked her up on Instagram. It's funny because the only, I don't know, shared contact or I follow them or they follow me, I, I don't know what, uh, is the other singer, Lauren Oder, Oder, Ode? I don't even know how to pronounce the last name, uh, but that, that's a singer who I really, really like a lot. I think it probably has the best voice in the world right now. And I think her voice compliment, like, I don't think they're doing the same thing, but I think both of them, if you listen to them sort of at the same time, you're in this similar kind of gorgeous range, this kind of lower than usual female voice range that um, has a particular build, you know, has a particular impact, has a particular effect uh, on your spirit. Anyways, you know, so I'm gonna try and keep it short, okay? Because if this video is too long, no one's gonna click on it. According to what I read, uh, she's mainly inspired by Nick Cave, which makes sense because this is kind of gothy. So, so, oh, Nick Cave and female, PJ Harvey. No, no, I don't think it's that PJ Harvey. Um, but really what this is, is that this, <laughs> this album really is, and this is what I'm gonna sing at the, end of the, at the end of the video, it really is drain you for an entire album. That's the, I would say, the primary sort of musical basis, you know, the Nirvana song. Whoops. That kind of chord progression, that kind of simplicity, that kind of rawness with this ethereal, Nico-esque voice over top. And that's what I'm going to sing at the end. I'm going to sing Drain You as sung by Nico. It's not going to be good. I'm not going to sing it now because it's, my, it's too insulting um, to, uh, to, uh, to Gretel. It's too insulting to Kurt Cobain. And it's too insulting to Nico. And frankly, it's insulting to you. So I don't stick around. Don't watch that. Let's get to the first track. And this is obviously where the Drain You idea comes up. Um, if you don't know the song Drain You, it's about this parasitic relationship between lovers. Uh, it's kind of dark, gross, visceral. And that's really where this whole album is thematically. It's about sort of a parasitic, vampiric relationship in both directions, each person draining the other person. And it starts off with the song Dry Me, right? Which, there you go. You know, this vaguely... <laughs> So I have my initial notes here. I wrote vaguely German. She's not German, Sky. You were fooled. Um, it's and, and you know it gets more interesting as it goes. There's these little like voices up and down. you know what you should listen to it by the way. Here, uh, li listen to the song "Dry, dry, dry Me." Uh, click above uh, the Nico, above the Nico's, above the Nico. Um, to listen to this song, really though, there's like four like. It's a pretty short album, and every song is good, and every song is different. I really suggest you just sit, sit down and listen to it. Um, but her voice goes up. There's these little odd changes in the back. And then when you get to the bridge, you realize that her register is very... She has a great register. She doesn't just sing low, but she uses the high notes very sparingly. And she doesn't use them for some kind of emotional... Whoosh, you know, it's not like that. It's just to... to it's a very subtle usage of her higher register. A uh, very kind of wild chorus. Eventually the drums come in. It's all kind of weird. All these lyrics are sort of grotesque. Dry me, dry me, dry me out. Dry me, dry me, dry me out. He passed early in the morning. Smells like rain and denial. A death got everyone questioning. Question everything but survival. And everyone's got something keeping them from singing and dancing. Okay, there's this whole theme of being dried and, and used and denial and death. Next song is called Drive. Here it's a little bit more poppy, so these three kind of grungy notes on the guitar. The drums eventually come in. The vocals are, are basically spoken with a little chorus effect, and it's a driving song. The song is called Drive, and I think you can really actually drive to the song. It has that kind of feeling. Apparently she's from England, so 
uh, or from London, so I doubt she does much driving, but I live in America, so I can tell you I've driven to this song. It's a good driving song. Odd little like clapping hook, uh, wait for me, honey. And then the cool thing is that the hook is actually, there's two hooks. The real hook is her singing, do you want to drive? Again, the, the song structure is quite interesting and dynamic. You're the last to leave, the first to arrive. I know you love living, but I treat you like you've died. You're so creepy, 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 creep. But I've been searching for a creep. Again, this sort of like attraction towards uh, negative people and negative interactions. King of Nothing has these weird synthetic drums. Her little voice is just so expressive. And then she harmonizes with herself. It's just beautiful. God damn it. This whole EP is filled with all these great vocal moments. Uh, super sort of high and... In... Wait. <laughs> Did I just go through this whole thing and forget to mention that, of course, Billie Eilish has a really low register and that's part of why I think my daughter likes Billie Eilish so much is because it reminds her of Nico, who we listen to all the time. It's ridiculous. How did I not think of that? Of course, there's a lot of popular female musicians with a lower register. And Lana Del Rey is coming out with an album tomorrow. Did you already put these all in the comments? You put the rest in the comments. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay? Smash the like bucket. Subscribe. You can tell me awesome video as always. A-V-A-A. -A -A. You can just put that in there if you want. Uh, <laughs> but anyways... Uh, what I like about this, going back to the Nirvana comparison, is actually this does not remind me of Nirvana. This reminds me of the Raincoats, which was, well, Kurt Cobain had like 15 Kurt Cobain's favorite bands, you know, because he was so important that any time in the 90s he said that a band was his favorite band, they had a huge wave of, of attention. Uh, you know, we're talking about the Melvins, talking about Daniel Johnston, and we're definitely talking about the Raincoats. Raincoats are just amazing, just an amazing female, post-punk, alternative, freaky music. And this really feels like the raincoats. Um, almost uh, kids like singing. You say you love your women, uh, but you only love your mother. This is just a, a theme which is all over music by women, talking about relationships with men. It, there really seems to be <laughs> a kind of mama's boy. Uh, it's like an archetype. I guess, is that what a fuck boy ends up being? I don't really, I'm, I'm too old to understand what a fuckboy is. Tell me what that is in the comments as well. Uh, demonetized. So like, like, like the kind of men who appear to be bad boys, but then in reality, they're just kind of mama's boys. I don't know. Next song is called Wiggy. I don't know if this is in reference to the, the part of England called Wigan. Which my friend Joe told me they eat pies. I don't know what that means. Or if this is in reference to um, to Chief Wiggum. I don't know. I don't know what this is. But it starts off with this great, almost like We Will Rock You style drum beat, except, you know, with a hi-hat as well. Then the bass comes in. And then here, again, like, we're in this kind of, like, realm of influences. This very much feels like a Pixies song. And it feels a little pastiche but then the voice comes in and it saves everything. I mean, seriously, her voice could just save anything. It's not bad, but it's not as good as the rest, I would say, the beginning bit. And then she's, like, singing up high with herself. An amazing post-chorus. A kind of Pixies guitar solo. Leading into the next song. Song, Little Vampire. This is that sort of like acoustic Pollywanna Cracker style Nirvana mode. Um, but again, just such wonderful range. Is she in love with a junkie? Is this about heroin? I can't tell. It, it could be that a lot of the stuff is about heroin. I hope it's not. I hope it's not. It's heroin's not cool. Okay. Well, hey, Kafka didn't do heroin. Everyone else in the frame besides me and Kafka. <laughs> Huge problems with heroin, but not. Anyways, I can't quite tell. Uh, the 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 heroin and and parasite and vampiric uh, and vampire um, metaphors always work really well. So I can't quite tell. He hates the sun, left me with a smile. He'll never know how much I pine, little vampire. So yeah, I can't quite tell, you know, because you know hating the sun is another thing that uh, the junkies do. <laughs> Suck my blood dry. He's so bright, but he always wants to fight. I don't know, but it really it's in that kind of drain you world of this kind of relationship. Shit. There's a great little simple guitar moment here. God damn it, this is gonna be over 15 minutes. I can't help it. I can't help it. This album's too good. I can't shut up. Thank you for watching. Thank you. I, you who are still watching, you get a thumbs up from me. I smashed your like bucket. I smashed your like bucket. Next song is called Head of the Love Club, which is the name of the EP, which I forgot to mention at the beginning. Loud pulsing sounds, low guitar grunge notes, this ethereal singing, maybe the most meaningful lyrics 
you are my love, feel alive, feel alive, I can sell you something, I'm a product, not a girl. The chorus breaks into this kind of ethereal la la la. Another great curling guitar moment, sometimes I awake at night to drink my man to death. More and more of this, this vampire imagery. Next song is called Easy Peeler, maybe the lowest point on the album. It's okay, but it doesn't quite fit with the rest. Like it shows that she can do other stuff, um, but maybe it doesn't fit in with the rest. I don't know, it's kind of folky. It's a real communication of her thoughts. You know, I'm no easy peeler, my skin is sewn onto my dress. If I was an only daughter, maybe I'd be someone else, but in time you'll know that I can do harm. So, you know, it's kind of acoustic. This does feel more like we're getting ready for the Lana album. You know, this kind of theme of sort of sexual promiscuity or not sexual promiscuity and relationship to family and how you do and being dangerous. I don't know. But again, another little, this whole song is nice though, because it's sort of a sweet, unexpected direction. And there's a great little bit, I think with recorder. Then we end with the song today, parentheses, can't help but cry. And I, I'm going to give you a bunch of comps here just to be obnoxious because I'm, a, uh, I'm, a, I'm a, a hobbyist music critic. And one thing music critics do is compare stuff to other stuff because they can't think of anything else to say. So this is sort of the U2 meets The Cure, but let me explain. It's upbeat drums, slightly reverbed guitar that's very kind of simple, bucka, 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 bucka. Um, a lot of stuff happening here, nice sort of like... Um, like high sounds in the back, which is nice. Uh, but what this really shows is a real pop sensibility that, again, she hasn't really shown here. And the reason I say it's cure-like is it's these kinds of like happy, sad lyrics, you know, like today, is, today will be the day, best day of my life, everything will change, everything will be all right. Because when I see your smile, everything will be all right. I tend to feel displaced. You say you're happy to see me. You always have such grace. And every time I see you, I cry. It's all about crying and crying. But it's a great song, poppy song. I highly suggest you listen. Matter of fact, a double stamp, listen to that. That'll also be in the description. You really need to listen to it. So this whole album is really good. I think I'm gonna buy it. I think I'm gonna buy it on Bandcamp. I think you should too. I think we need to support more artists. And uh, this is a really good artist, okay? So, as promised, if you stayed late, late enough, <laughs> this, this is not at all what the Gretel Heinlein album sounds like. This is me having fun imagining what it would sound like if Nico tried to sing Nirvana, okay? I instantly regret this. This is my guitar. This is Leroy, my guitar. I've had this for like, I've had this for longer than the singer of this album has been alive. So, okay. <clears throat> One baby to another Says I'm happy to meet you I don't care what you think Unless it's about me It is now my duty to Completely drain you I travel through a tube and end up in your infection. <laughs> I regret that entirely. Apologies all around, everybody. Somebody send me an email. Ask me to take this video down. All right, support new music, everybody. There's the camera.